recording. Okay. Um, I'm actually hearing from a lot of people uh, kind of a suffering and missing hugs and human connection. And um, I mean, I do live with my father and I do sort of uh, have to make his meals three times a day. So I can't really say that um, I've been in a in a room for the last six months. But, um, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I miss hugs or human connection. Um, mind you, I do have my father with me in the house, so that's something. Uh, uh, but, um, so for me, like whenever I've got a problem, uh, like let's say I'm feeling lonely and not touched enough, uh, and I also believe that I need human connection to feel whole. I need a hug every now and then to feel whole and connected. I need humans. I need to have contact with humans on a regular basis to feel okay. Um, otherwise, I'm going to feel lonely and bad or, or, or whatever it is. I, um, uh, if I, oh, I've just noticed I haven't had a hug or, uh, he, uh, or a proper human connection for, for a week. And I'm starting to feel disconnected and withdrawn and um, and not 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 well any longer. I need to get a hug as quickly as possible. I need to find a real human being to talk to, and get some and get some love from. You know, you know, every, everything for me is a projection of the search for love. You know, well, I can I can have the belief system unless a human loves me, I will be empty and I'll be not complete. Um, you know, um, so I, you know, so if I'm in an empty room, I believe if I'm in an empty room for too long, not speaking to or getting love from any human being, and not even getting a hug and physical, I believe that I need human connection, a human hug. Even talking is not enough. I need a human hug. I need someone to hug me, uh, you know, and otherwise I go from withdrawals if I don't have a hug for long enough. So all of this stuff, I mean, my personal view on it, as you know, and take what you want, leave the rest is, I mean, I, I pursue enlightenment, which is transcending all my limiting beliefs that I've been programmed with from my parents, from society, from TV, uh, from the world. If I have any kind of limiting belief that I need something outside in the world to cancel it, to place it into God's love and light, to uh, pray for a miracle to see the idea that I need hugs and human interaction to feel okay. Uh, and to see that, uh, ask the Holy Spirit, ask uh, God for a miracle and to see that idea differently. And as long as I keep having that idea, I haven't had a hug for two days, I haven't had a hug for three days, you know, I, I, can, you know, I cancel my belief. I need a hug and human love to be okay. I cancel my belief that Humans are the only source of love and connection that, that there is, so that I feel loved and connected and whole. Um, I, um, uh, God did not create a lack of wholeness, happiness, and joy and freedom if I haven't had contact or a hug from a human being uh, within a certain time span. God did not create that, and so it is not real. Also, what about like if I haven't had a hug and I start to feel ill, my body starts to get depleted, my head saying you need, a, you need a hug, you need some human love, you need to be around real humans, you can't be on screens all day. What if my head is saying that? What about the feelings? Even if I cancel the belief that I need humans and love, um, what, about the, what about my physical feel? My body's going downhill. I'm getting all kinds of physical symptoms. I'm feeling, um, and I'm feeling really anxious and fearful. But, you know, I can cancel the beliefs. Well, what about these horrific feelings in my body? And my body's going, is surely that, that means that the power is in the world. The, I, I'm sure I'm right. I need a person, uh, some human love. I need a hug from anybody. Otherwise, you know, my body's going, no. And for me, that is, that is a feeling of withdrawal from the idea, projection, that I need that, those things to feel okay. I've done this with loads of illnesses and loads of beliefs. You know, even beliefs when my had kidney failure, gout, couldn't breathe, that all of this was an illusion, that there is a source of love and peace and wholeness within me. And if I connect more to that, and 
feel out the feelings of withdrawal. Even if I get physical symptoms and my body is going all over the place, for me, that's a withdrawal. <clears throat> I have to sit with it and cancel the beliefs around the illness <clears throat> and uh, whatever feelings are coming up. So, you know, I put, you know, as a human being, I have this software of being a human. What does that mean? It means as a human, I get all the belief system all other humans get. I, I believe that to be incarnated in this world as a human being, I've already got what's called the belief systems of humanness. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, there's the archetypes, the, the, the subset of beliefs of being a woman and the expression of that and the subset of beliefs of being a man and the expression of that. So those are a load of belief systems of what a man is and what a woman is and how that should be expressed through hormones, through bodies, through age related uh, situations. So but I've definitely got the human one. So I've got the things like humans need to have physical contact and love from other humans. Otherwise, <clears throat> I'm going to be in lack. I'm going to start feeling more limited and get horrible feelings. And even I might feel like I'll die if I don't get that source of love from a human being. So those are what I call collective belief systems. But I don't believe that I don't believe in that. I mean, I choose not to. And, I, and if I did or I've had hung symptoms or feelings or obsessive thoughts, I would cancel them and feel out the feelings and reconnect to the love of God within. I am sustained by the love of God is one of the Course of Miracles lessons. I am sustained by the love of God. I am not sustained by a lack of, I'm not lack of nourishment through lack of human connection and hugs. I cancel that idea. God did not create it and therefore it is not real. So um, <clears throat> God is the source of love. God is the source of abundance. God is the love of joy. God is the love of freedom beyond any limits or transitory things that I project with value. Uh, within the world. So that's what I choose um, from my own experience. I mean, sh shall I share some experience? Um, I remember once the most mystical thing I had, you know, I went to see an enlightened teacher and I had a, my, the day that I went to meet him, my feet swelled up with a huge gout attack and it was really swollen and painful. And I wanted to call the teacher to say, I can't make the meeting. But <clears throat> something told me I'll never get another chance to meet this person to deflate my ego. So <clears throat> I hobbled there uh, with horrific pain to this place in Brixton and I got to meet him and he just asked me, who are you? You know, uh, he was referring to what, what am I as an ego and a body? And I said, no, I, I, there's an observer behind all this rubbish. And then he said, what's behind that? What's behind your observer? And the world disappeared in infinite light. There was no time, no me, no thinking. No, not even any colors, light so and love so powerful, it was infinite, is the best way to say it. And when I came back into my consciousness, and I could see him again, I was in bliss and ecstasy. And I, I got up, but I walked away from that room when he told me to go. And I didn't have any pain. You know, it was like um, the pain and the physical illness had just mopped up. The light of God is not able to, to I mean, it was able to cure any, anything and everything. So anyway, I'll shut up on that one and I'll quickly stop the recording. I'm going to go 